Ladies and gentlemen, how's it going? Once again, I'm Nev from Nev's Tech Bits. Today, I want to check out the Intel Compute Stick. This particular stick was released in 2015. It was released with Windows 8.1. Remember that. Anyways, an older version, but still, it checks out. I've had a little bit of time to play with this thing. And now that I've had time to check it out, I want to see what I can do to make it faster, stronger, more alive. But I should say this is the first HDMI stick that I've come across that I use. And I want to compare it to other newer and used uh, mini PCs. Let's see what kind of strength that this unit has. Now, I'm not sure if this has a fan in it or not, but I wouldn't be surprised. And I think I can bypass that by putting a bigger heat sink on it. And you know how much I love my aftermarket heat sinks over here. Oh, you can tell there's been some wear here. Someone's actually gotten some use out of it um let's put this thing to a benchmark see what it got see what it can take and then uh, see what we can do with it over here we have the uh, micro sd slot and i've managed to transfer things at 25 megabytes a second from there over here this is uh, just a place that you can put a key ring through it and we have speed holes. Honestly, I don't know if there's a fan. I'm going to find out. I'm going to crack this thing open. There's the on button. There's the power. There's the USB. You get a single USB, USB 2.0. Now, I got this used, of course. And one interesting thing is it actually came with a... It came with a BlackBerry charge cable. You know, of course, you can tell that because you got the uh, BlackBerry symbol right. Nyaw. You guys remember that? You guys remember? Oh, that's nostalgic, isn't it? And over here, I got a... I got an Apple charge cube. Yeah, that's right. 10 watts, ladies. 2.1 amp output. If this is anything other than Apple, I'd be concerned and be like, uh, this probably didn't come with the original unit, so maybe we shouldn't be using it. But hey, Apple makes good stuff when it comes to charge cubes. I've heard Lewis Rossman complain about the computers, but I've never heard him uh, complain about the charge cubes. All right, she's locked, cocked, ready to rock. Let's get her all plugged in. I'll show you what's on the inside of it. And you can tell I've used it there, right? Anyways, and we'll try some uh, gamer benchmarks on it and see what she can pull down. After that, I'm going to be modding this thing. And let's see how much we can get away with. Once again, here we are at the battle station. Over on the left-hand side, I have this uh, Intel stick. On the right-hand side, I have my workstation unit, and I can be using that to uh, check stats as I go through some of this stuff. I have a... Uh, multimedia pad down here and with that i got a mouse and a keyboard and with that i can use the one usb port on this kind girl so let's see exactly what this unit has in it okay now as we can see here we got an in intel hd graphics gpu of course that means it's taken its memory from the ram this thing only has two gigabytes of ram to begin with and a 32-bit operating system it should be said and quad core quad core with a cpu of the intel atom z3735f of course the intel atom is made to be very cool not take a whole lot of power but be powerful relatively um over here on the right you can't see it but um, here you can get a look at uh, what the GPU benchmarks at or CPU 596 I've definitely had a lot better than that before here we got the specs we got 32 gigabytes internal Windows 10 32 bit 4 cores 1.3 gigahertz uh, release MRSP of 159 and of course 22 or 32 gigabytes eMMC which means it's soldered right to the board Memory is 2 gigabytes, yada yada, USB 2.0. All right. Of course, now it is benchmark time. Okay, we're up, we're ready to go. If this thing can beat 250, it can beat most of the slower systems that I have. I'll be back when we start getting to the 3D mark. All right, we're starting out strong with 1.5 to maybe 3.5 frames per second on the um, DirectX 9. At least we're pulling off 1080. DirectX 10, 0.6 to 2.5 frames per second around the floating bush. We got DirectX 11 starting at 0.81 frames per second. Right now we are moving up to 2.5 with the space jellyfish no less. So we can't get DirectX 12 to play on this, meaning that, uh, well, it's just not going to happen for Fortnite, unfortunately. But the important question, will it play Doom? We'll find out.
Okay, so here's the end result. Final score, 257. Just did just a little bit better than 250. So it puts this with uh, a Lenovo T420 just below a Z210 i7 uh, 2600 S with an SSD. So at this point, I'm almost wondering if the benchmark is just no good for anything that can't handle uh, Direct X 12. Now, I couldn't get a single game working on this system, so I'm gonna do a reboot and try one more time. Alright, now for the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. All anybody wants to know will it play Doom? Oh, yeah, ladies, it might be in like, oh, look how small, look how small, look how cute. That's what the ladies say. That's what my wife says. I mean, oh, I'm hyped now, folks. Looks like I can get the, I can get angry video game nerd to work, which ain't so bad. <laughs> I love this game. Look at the pause options. That's the best. Frickin' love AVGN, man. Now, I definitely get the feeling like if I installed an antivirus on this thing, it would be completely unusable. But, one great thing that this is for is just playing videos. I'm not going to pause, I'm going to show you how long it actually takes to open up my test file. 1.5... 1 1.5 gigabyte file. A real Hollywood movie. What makes you say that, Mark? Let's toss the football around, Mark. Anyways, yeah, so, streaming. This is what this thing is good for. It can definitely play relatively well off of the SD card or off of a USB. So, if you just want to watch movies with something, hey, here you go. So, next up, let's test out Netflix streaming media. All right, it's Doogie Hauser with a machine gun. Oh, yeah, I could watch that all day. Do your part. Man, this shit gets right into it, eh? Countdown to victory. So, yeah, I'd say this definitely passes the Netflix test. Now, oddly enough, YouTube is not the fastest thing, but it does, it does download, it does play at, uh, at lower quality, I've found. Oh, but you know, those advertisements always come right quick, right? You know what, now that I'm running it again, it definitely seems faster than it did the first... Oh, did you see that stutter? There was a stutter. Oh, who's a cute kitty. Hey, kitty. Aww. So, here we got the obligatory Wi-Fi test. I was definitely expecting better than that. The processor in that Wi-Fi chip mustn't be going too hard because even if this was N, at the range I am from the router, I should be getting 30 uh, megabits per second. So, next up, here comes the modifications. I'm going to use the splitter to get multiple ports and then I'm going to plug in a USB to Ethernet and see what kind of speeds I can get. Oh yeah, ladies, that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So that's just a little bit better now than what I thought it should have been at to begin with. 30, 30 megabits I'd be happy with, but hardwire I can get this. That's not bad at all. Oh yeah, that's definitely much snappier when I put the hardwire connection on it. Oh yeah, that is so much faster. That is so much faster. Of course, here's how we're currently sitting at uh, the modifications that I have on it right now. Next up, I want to crack this unit open and see if I can make the thing run any cooler. If I make the thing run cooler, maybe it'll run faster. Let's find out. Okay, so as you can see, I managed to get this bad boy cracked open. All that it took was a guitar pick. There are no Phillips head screws, no cr screws here, all just clips. We got a teeny weeny itty bitty fan. We have a heat sink, a bit of a shield. And, of course, that'll uh, help keep the unit nice and cool. And over here we have the USB, and we have the micro SD card. Very nice. And here's what she looks like on the back half. Looks like we got our Wi-Fi card there. And I'm imagining that this is where our CPU is at. No, that's where the memory is. Look at that, folks. That's Kingston. That Intel uses Kingston memory. I wonder if that has any DRAM on it. That's just so interesting. They've got a little itty bitty CMOS battery. And then over here, that must be, okay, it has one antenna. It must be a single antenna Wi-Fi. Man, that is so cool. So I managed to get 
that heat shield off. And that's what we got. More Kingston memory. And that is CPU right there. I'm wondering if that's the RAM. Or if maybe that's the control card for the memory. This is the EMMC right there, though. So, let's try a new heatsink. Yep. There we go. A fan. Try that one more time. All right, so lastly, here you can see it's sandwiched between a big chunk of aluminum and a big brick of aluminum. I did a, another benchmark, and... While it definitely seems faster, the benchmark didn't really get much better. But this thing's still a lot of fun. This thing is great if all you're doing is watching some shows on it. Man, I mean, if you're the type of person to uh, back up your physical copies and not pirate at all, if you're the type of person to do something like that and uh, put your not pirated videos on a USB key and then uh, send it on over to your mamaru so that she could watch it on her TV, that would definitely be uh, the kind of tool that you could use even today. And if you're doing such a thing, like I am, I suggest that uh, you get one of these media keyboards. These things are really nice, so you don't lose your mouse. You always have your mouse pad right there. It isn't as nice as other things, as other setups, but it will get the movie played, the video played, and as you've seen, you get Netflix on it. That'll keep your mummeru happy. So, I guess that's it for us, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, like and subscribe if you like this stuff. It's always appreciated, and uh, call your mom.